Hello, beautiful friends, and welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about, I think, a pretty hot topic because it's one that has quite significance in terms of overarching complications with our lives, our health, our well-being, our relationships, and life in general. But we're going to talk about stress, and I don't know that I've ever met anyone in my life walk that has not experienced stress at one point in time or another. And I know that it has complicated the lives of many people, either with their health or their relationships. So today we are going to talk to an expert on stress and give you some helpful hints and tips and strategies for dealing with stress, reducing stress, so that you can have a better or I should say, um, more peaceful journey, both in life as well as in business. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, Ziki Saptow, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. I'm going to say that one more time. Without (laughs) further ado, Ziki Tao, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here today. Well, thank you. What a wonderful topic we picked. I think that everybody needs, you know, aids and guidance with um, stress, stress relief in general. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much in our world today that is triggering stress. You know, all you have to do is, is take a hop onto Instagram or (laughs) Facebook and it's like, oh my gosh, the world is insane right now. And your stress level is going to be elevated. So not to mention the, the daily grind, right. In work, raising families, carpooling, taxi driving, our kids, whatever it may be. So I think it's a hot topic. And I think it's one that we will all be better served just for having had the discussion today. Before we dive in though, Vicki, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today to help people manage and navigate stress? Absolutely. So I've been a stress management expert for over 25 years. Of course, it started without going in too much details with my own journey of stress and trauma. And I've learned at a very, very young age, um, just being aware of the amount of stress that I was surrounded by and the world in general, I figured out just natural tips that helped me along the way and absolutely helped me survive with trauma, with grief and PTSD, as we know, PTSD does not just disappear, but we have so many ways of managing it, just like pain management, same thing for stress. Um, It's a form of just dealing with what you've gone through or what you're going through, but without falling apart anymore. So I feel like everybody needs help. Oh, I would say so. And it's funny that this is the, not really funny, funny, but I mean, interesting, I guess, that we're having this discussion today because this morning I interviewed Melanie Wilson. And for anyone listening to the show, I'll link her episode in the show notes as well. But she's someone who has walked through a lot of trauma over her her life. And she wrote a book called Unsilenced. And we have this discussion today over overcoming. And I think anytime you have situations in life that include trauma, I, we handle things differently. I think we are more prone to the negative. We're more prone to questioning and we're more prone to stress. Mm -hmm. Also like prone to believing what the outside says, we're so influenced by everything right now that if somebody diagnoses you with something or tells you, you know, you are traumatized, you need this type of medication, or you need to do this, not necessarily is it always true until you really go on a discovery lane and try to figure out, you know, how do I tap into this root cause of the trauma or what's causing my stress first? And recognizing that I have the power within me to at least do 50% of the work to get Mm -hmm. better, not just to go in the downward spiral where you are consistently falling apart. And then of course, the depression and all that takes over. So we have Mm -hmm. so many wonderful ways of healing ourselves. Of course, you have to have faith 
faith in yourself. I have a lot of clients that I ask them, you know, what do you believe in? What do you tap into? What is your belief system? And a lot say God, but there are some, believe it or not, that say, I don't believe in anything. Yeah. And I start to search, like, where is that magic place within them that they can believe in themselves? Yeah. And also a form of, of um, belief system. Yeah. And you said something interesting to me because when I wrote my book, You Mean Anxiety, that was one of the things I talked about with before you can start to navigate anxiety. And I think it's the same with stress is what is causing it and what, what are your triggers and what are your symptoms? Mm -hmm. If you can identify what symptoms you're having, how it's making you feel, what you're experiencing when you have these feelings, you can discover the triggers. And I think that's really important too, before we can even take that step to go down the road of discovery, right? Like that, that yes. is the first step. You're absolutely correct. Anxiety is such a huge topic because, you know, as yourself, myself as well, I've suffered with anxiety my entire life. And only till I got a little bit, maybe in my 20, late twenties, I recognize that anxiety has no signals, no warnings. It just shows up whenever it wants to. It, it's, it was one of the scariest thing to fear. But as you said, once you figure out where it's coming from, then you can tap into a new way of, of healing your life and even becoming super successful just yeah. by facing your anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, we talk so much about the what if thoughts when in regards to anxiety, but if you think about that, if you're not navigating those and you're not facing them head on, mm -hmm. all that's going to do is compound your level of stress. And I think stress and anxiety kind of go hand in hand, but I think you can have stress without anxiety and I think anxiety can escalate it. So let's talk a little bit about identifying when you need to start addressing the stress that's in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. First of all, most people say they are not stressed <laughs> when I say, oh, it looks like you're stressed or I feel stressed. They go into a protective mode immediately. I'm fine. I have everything under control, not stress. I have meetings, I have phone calls, I'm on the go. So I think that's the number one mistake that people make. They don't tune in within themselves to find out their stress level. And the best way to test your stress level is through your breath. You know, as simple as it sounds, we take our breath for granted because psychologically and subconsciously, we know the next breath is coming. And I think from also a young age, when, when you lose a lot in your life, you start to realize, wait a minute, our breath is like, this is our oxygen. This is our gold mine. This is our wealth. So breath test. If you inhale deep breath and your breath start, stops right here by your chest, that's a high level of stress. And anybody can do it. And I tell people, take a deep breath. And it stops so short, you're highly stressed. So if your breath easily flows down, almost like liquid, all the way below your chest into your belly button area, you know, your sacrum area, it's you're you're not so stressed. You're actually can cope. Everything's fine. Everything is perfect order. Uh -huh. So a breath tech test is vital. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny you say that because when you think of anxiety, so many people have panic attacks and that that's what happens is they're not able to catch their breath. And it's that, then you have that sense of panic. Like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. What's wrong with me. And then people will have, think they're having a heart attack or think they need to go to the emergency room when it's that level of stress and anxiety that's preventing them from even being able to catch their breath. You're right. And that happens every, even kids today, kids are under so much pressure and stress, especially since COVID and everything that we went through. So everything is a trigger. Like what's going on in the world now? Why are mom and dad stressed? Why are we having so much stress around us that they learn to adapt? Sadly, they learn to adapt stress into their life where they should just be kids. Yeah. Playing. Yeah. And I think as far as identification, that's a great exercise. And I think also you can have a feeling of mood shifts or irritability where things just kind of make you jumpy when you're <laughs> under high stress, right? True. Yes. Yeah. 
a uh, nerve it's a nerve reaction you know just nerves um population operates on nerves instead of just their their feelings of how like you said how can how am I feeling right now so instead of flowing with the mood shift and the mood swings it would be so cool to just be centered for a moment and I think gratitude is a huge one like if you wake up with gratitude and you just have to place your heart your hand on your heartbeat first of all you're acknowledging that your heart's beating simple second you take a deep breath and instead of focusing on what I want to achieve or where I need to go just be present in that moment of where you are right now I'm alive my heart's beating I'm surrounded by you know my loved ones or health health to me as well Mm -hmm. you know so once you recognize that you are already wealthy and successful in your state of being, then you can achieve anything, anything. Mm-hmm. Nothing can yeah. stop. I love that. And I'm a huge, huge supporter of having a gratitude practice. I feel like we are so inundated with what looks to be perfect or what other people have or what we should be doing or should have. And it's so important to just sit and think about oh my gosh, I have so many blessings that I'm surrounded with. Mm. And like you said, health, oh my gosh, it's, it's, you are so wealthy if you have your health because so Mm -hmm. many people don't have that. And I think it's, it's kind of nice to gauge like where you are on your journey and how successful you are by how healthy you are, because sure, we can have a ton of money in the bank, but if we haven't taken care of our body and our mind, we don't have the health nothing. to enjoy it. We really have nothing. Yes. Yeah. And it means nothing too. I mean, I, I'm very blessed because my father, I'm my late father now, but he taught me, Tiki, everything can be replaced, but your health. Mm-hmm. So it was such a powerful statement that he used to repeat. And I've taken it very seriously throughout my life. And, you know, even dealing with different scares and you do when, when you're in that place where you don't know if you're going to have another moment to breathe you it's almost like you make this deal all right god if i breathe one more time i promise to just never take my breath for gratitude again and that's exactly what i did i i survived and i made a pact i'm going to teach people how to breathe how to stay calm and to help them recognize that your their breath is their wealth and if we take that for granted, what's the point of living? What's the point of being successful? What's the point of helping others? If we don't set that example, because the competition will never end outside of ourselves, what people say, what people think. And at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It is your relationship with yourself and your alignment with your faith and your faith and your belief system. Mm-hmm. So, so breathing. <laughs> Yeah. Breathing, breathing. I agree. So let's talk about that for a second, Ziggy. Um, what, so if someone identifies, okay, you know what? I am stressed. This is, Mm -hmm. I'm not in a healthy place right now because my mind is racing. I have shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. What, you know, and obviously it could be their job. They can identify that factor of what it is. What's the next step to start managing that to become healthier? Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, to identify their stress factor, is this mine or am I taking on stress that doesn't belong to me? I think that is so important. A lot of people have all these little antennas and they're picking up stuff that's not theirs. Picking up, my mom is going through something. My best friend is going through something. My children. So where is the cause factor of the stress if this is mine, I'm stressed over my interview, my my new job, my new book I'm about to publish, um, all these things, then you at least know this is my stress. If it's my stress, I need to start, first of all, breathe, it's pausing, pause life for a minute, even if you're on the go. It takes 30 seconds for your brain to catch a command to relax. So you pause and you say, your name, like Tiki, relax. Everything is in perfect order. So I think that's the first step. Or Tiki, relax. Or Robin, relax. This is not mine. This is not serving me right now. This is not mine. 
So you're separating yourself. It's a detachment Mm -hmm. from whatever you're taking on the stress. Understanding that it's not mine. Me being stressed over it is not going to change the situation. Mm, I love that. And it it's so incredibly true. You know, the Bible tells us not to worry about tomorrow because today has enough, right? <laughs> enough challenges. And, have enough. <laughs> yeah. And that that's such a good thing to remember that other people's problems are not ours mm-hmm. to manage. Sure, we can be empathetic and we can Absolutely. give them love and support, but their problems are not our pro- problems to worry about or have escalated stress over. So I love that you say that first, let's identify what is the source. And if it's not our source, we don't have to take it on. We can detach. So then what's the next step after we identify that? The next step is find your way of, of course, I call it meditation today. Back in the day, I didn't know it was called meditation, but what is meditation to you? I don't expect people to sit and just you know, close their eyes for hours and take deep breaths. But what it what brings you joy? Is it walking? Is it dancing? Is it sitting in silence? Is it in nature staring at the sky? Whatever, whatever talks to you, take five minutes a day and do that, you know, and big corporations, you know, I've done some seminars there and I tell them bathroom breaks. You have no excuse to say the most famous thing that people say, I don't have time. I don't have time to relax. I don't have time to breathe. What you're telling me is you don't love yourself. What you're telling me is you can't build this empire that you have set your goals towards because you're not taking care of yourself. No you, no life aside of you. So what are you going to do? So five minutes a day um, with gratitude in the morning, I think is important. And If you want to learn how to breathe, basically, you take five to eight breaths in, you hold it for the count of eight or five, and then you exhale. You only do it three times. The end. Yeah, yeah. And again, that breath is so important for just regulation with our body, our blood flow with you know, how things are moving through our mind. So, and, and really even the chemical balances within our brain, right? So absolutely. Not only that, you are changing the chemical imbalances in your brain through your breath. Like the breath is a science of it on its own. It is genius. And I, my hope with this world and my dream that everybody taps into it, like a lot deeper than what they do, because it makes you happier, more youthful, it gives you energy. So you are storing all this energy that you're giving away daily. I mean, we give our energy away and then we run out. But when we run out, it's almost too late. Sometimes you are, you know, having super anxiety attacks, your your uh, cholesterol levels are out of control. Um, you're unable to perform the same way that you are supposed to because you're capable of doing so much more than than you know even so you're discovering yourself in a different way and in a much higher way Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah and I love that five minute pause for me it's you know just sitting outside for five minutes in nature in the sun is like such a gift and journaling is another thing and we know that journaling is actually equal to sitting and meditating like traditional meditating um, right because you it influences the neural pathways in the brain and lets you reset. So all of those are great suggestions. So after we pause for that five minutes, we do this exercise. Is there anything else that we should be thinking about? I love that you said journaling. I'm all about journaling. I encourage people to journal. I think it's such a great way of releasing the stress because you are expressing it outward. So we have verbal expression, which is one way of uh, releasing or venting releasing stress, breathing and journaling is wonderful because it's like a self-therapeutic task that you take with yourself. The other one is shaking off your body. It's kind of funny. We have done this in hundreds and hundreds of people in one room. And if they just, it's almost like you're jumping in place three times, but you shake your whole body and you literally feel like the stress melts off you. 
And then we just take one deep breath and people can feel the shift from A to B, like how stressed they can compare the stress levels, especially the ones that said they weren't stressed at all. So that's kind of, so it's like, shake your body off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I'm assuming that you're going to emphasize like diet and exercise Mm -hmm. also, Mm -hmm. because those are two holistic approaches that can really change the, well, the happiness chemicals are the endorphins in our body. Yeah. And I think, and, and maybe you agree, but I feel like we live in that such a digital society that everybody immediately just goes for their phone instead mm-hmm. of doing these other things that, you know, the phone can give you a dopamine hit, but it's so short lived. <laughs> But when you do these other things, like eat healthy, or when you exercise, you have that positive endorphin rush, you have the dopamine release, but those are the things that help (laughs) kind of balance out the, the cortisol, the cortisol release, right? The cortisol is a stress hormone, which will cause all kinds of damage to your body. So Mm -hmm. I would love for you to elaborate on, on some of those things as well. Yeah. I love how you said cortisol and especially as women, or if you're over the age of 40, you know, 45, we do deal with a lot of like changes and cortisol stuff and hormones. I think exercise is vital to those that can exercise. Don't take exercise for granted. Even if it just means going up and down the stairs or walking in the fresh air or whatever is your choice of exercise. I think minimum three times a week, I do have a few clients that cannot exercise, you know, if you're bound or in a wheelchair or, you know, there are wonderful brain exercises that affect the body as well. And I'm passionate about that because I've seen some wonderful results. So again, not to take exercise for granted, it makes us happy. It gives us energy. And of course it works and, you know, we digest our food much, but back in the day, I remember it was vital with our families after each meal when you take a walk, mm-hmm. right? Just simply why? Oh, it's better for you to walk and digest instead of just sitting and, you know, becoming unhealthy. So yeah, exercise, um, diet. It's really tough these days. Everybody has different opinions on diets and what works for them. I say what works for you, cut down on sugar because that does make us stressed and irritated. Um, it's, it, it depletes you. So if sugar for me is number one, and then the second thing is vegetables, like adding wholesome green superpower greens is, it makes me so happy. I feel so good and high on life when I have my vegetables. How do you feel about it? No, I agree 100%. And I have to say, like, I am I love sugar. Like I, that's my downfall. You know, if you eat those little quizzes you do and it's like sugar or salt and I'm yeah. always sugar. Like I would choose something sweet every single time. Yeah. I mean, unless there was a combination of the two, then, you know, <laughs> but, um, I, I have to say like, it drags me down. Like if I have, instead of eating a healthy snack, like an apple or a vegetable or something like that in the afternoon, if I have sugar, I have that low, my mm-hmm. energy dips versus having something that is wholesome, a whole food, vegetables, nuts, something like that makes such a big difference. So I'm a huge advocate for exercise, huge advocate for eating healthy. And I think when we talk about that, and I'll link other episodes, because we have had several nutritionists or health Mm -hmm. and wellness coaches on the show Mm -hmm. to talk about like diet and exercise and stuff. But when you eat healthy, you're energy level goes up because your body has the fuel it needs and it has the fuel it needs in the right balance that right. it needs it versus when we automatically go to, you know, junk Leave food it. or yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's not fun to be depleted. And just like you, I'm a, oh my gosh, I don't even want to talk about sugar because I, <laughs> I ate so much pastries and cookies in my life till I was told if you don't stop, you're going to be in trouble. So this is how I went on the sugar journey. And today I, after forcing myself, you know, to eat an apple a day and do all the right things you do, it's another form of like a brainwash, you know, like an apple is filled with sugar. You know, this is my chocolate chip cookie right now. And you just (laughs) kind of work on it. 
so I understand where you come from with the sugar. So did I, and being raised with so much sugar in the house and baking goods and, oh, it was tough to cut down on the sugar. So I think complete no sugar, that would be tough. Yeah, I like absolutely. To, I like to have a balance of both yeah. worlds. But I think that's the key, right? And I think that's the key with overall stress management too, is everything in moderation. Everything. If you, you know, if you're pushing yourself to such extremes and you're pushing yourself at work and then you're pushing yourself, say, to run marathons and you're pushing yourself to be at every one of your kids' activities and, you know, do all of these other things on top of that, eventually you're going to snap. Like we're not meant to do it all. And as entrepreneurs, I think that's where delegation, hiring a team, all of those things come into play because we can go farther faster when we have the support we need and when we're healthy and we're doing things in moderation versus going all in over the top and causing that elevated stress. Absolutely right. Because that doesn't matter what stress um, remedies you're going to use, that's going to triple your stress levels naturally, just by going full force like that and extreme. I think we need to have fun. It doesn't matter what demands we have and how much we're piled with to-do lists. I think fun is a huge factor. Fun creates balance. You got, you got laughter is healing. Like you got to learn to laugh through even difficult times, laugh about everything. Laughter is a huge stress reducer and everything in balance. If you're on a diet, my diet remedy, I don't have a diet. I don't believe in diets. I say, if you really want to like get healthier, cut down on your weight or whatever, eat half. You want to have that, that delicious cheesecake. Oh, that sounds so good. Eat half of it. You don't have to finish the whole thing. You know, also in the United States, we have giant, large portions. Everything is served to us, like, I think for like more than three people. So eating half, I think, creates a balance automatically too. Or if your schedule is packed with um, appointments and to-do lists, try to take at least 30% of this time for yourself. Where can I have fun here somewhere? Where can I just have some me time, you know? So it's just navigating time and recognizing that you come first. You are priority. Yeah, it's like, you know, they always say the when you get on an airplane and you put your mask on first before you help someone else. And we have to take care of our mind and body first before we can take care of everybody else's mind and body and all of their needs. Yes. Absolutely. Because if, and it's not coming from a selfish place, again, that detachment, because if we are detached and we need to help someone else, we can give a hundred percent in helping them because we are not emotionally involved. Therefore they can have much greater results. But if they feel your stress and you're panicking, I mean, as a mom, we know, you know, as a mom, I know this because when we take on and what we got to do for our children, this is why you see all the moms depleted because they're giving their heart away 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> That's stress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this has been such a great conversation. I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. How can the uh, listeners connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even hire you if they're under such extreme <laughs> stress, they need your help. Thank you so much. Well, it's a choice, you know, it's a, it's a form of discipline. If you want to de-stress, you got to be disciplined and you got to have a strong willpower, but it works. And it's a commitment, just like you're committed to yourself and to your belief system. It's the same thing. So I'm on tikitao.com. That's my website. Also tikitao official on Instagram and Facebook. That's awesome. And I will have the link to your site in the show notes as well, listeners, so that you can go and check her out and connect with her. And thank you for sharing her brilliance with us today. Me. <laughs> and I want to encourage listeners that, you know, sometimes it's really hard to see that we are stressed despite the fact that we're inundated with so much in life, right? Mm -hmm. So take that time to just sit. And sometimes it's just taking a pen and paper and writing out what you're thinking, what you're feeling and seeing where that leads you. Because I have a feeling you'll quickly discover after doing that exercise, like what it is that's stressing you out or where you need to back off or where you need to maybe shift in relationships that are taking a lot of demand or 
I guess, causing a lot of demand on you. Um, and the other thing I want to encourage you to do is play. Like you mm-hmm. have, like, like Ziki said, 30, 30 minutes a day to do something for you. Take that five minutes and do that six times a day. That gives you 30 minutes. And maybe it's tapping into your creativity. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it is journaling or writing. Sometimes Mm -hmm. when you're stressed, you can write about that and it all comes out just like if you meditate. So I encourage you just find those at least five minutes a day where you can laugh in, in addition to those 30 minutes that you're taking to your, for yourself, because I think you'll see that that laughter really does transform your entire life and makes you feel so much better. Yeah. All right. With that, we're going to close out this episode. If you know someone who is experiencing stress, please share the episode with them so that they know, number one, you care about them. And number two, they can start navigating their stress and anxiety and become healthier and live a more joyful, peaceful, purposeful life. Amen. Yes. Thank you.